Please be seated. Today has been set aside to offer thanks for Dr. Ann Stevenson Moe and her almost 47 year ministry at Church of the Redeemer. In the words of Cool and the Gang, it's a celebration of Dr. Ann Stevenson Moe. At midnight tonight, Ann retires as organist choir master at Church of the Redeemer. But thanks be to God, at 12.01, she becomes organist choir master emeritus at Church of the Redeemer. <laughs> Therefore, this is a tribute, not a farewell. And that makes our hearts glad indeed. If you want to set Anne's ministry, her reign at the organ bench at Redeemer in context, Napoleon's reign was about 15 years. <laughs> uh, unprecedented at the time. Alexander the Great, before him, had a 13-year run, which was stunning for 323 B.C. One has to look to the likes of other strong women, in fact, like Victoria or Elizabeth II, to find a monarch who's reigned longer than Anne Stevenson Moe. <laughs> and I refer to her reign because I cherish the fact that Anne is Redeemer royalty, our grand dame in every sense of the word. I've never told her until now, partly because it could have been misconstrued as unprofessional, but I fell in love with you, Anne, the moment we first met. I was interviewing for a job here on Palm Sunday eight years ago. And when I first heard Ann play Daniel Moe's Hosanna to the Son of David, I immediately realized that none of this was a job for her. Not a job, but a joy doing what she loves. How few retired here today, or planning to retire, can say that life's work was all joy, doing what you loved. And God has given you a precious, precious gift. Many precious, precious gifts. And while I think you really are at your prime, and while I'm convinced you age in reverse, <laughs> I appreciate your decision to step back and to spend more time with your wonderful boys, Christophe and Stefan, and your family and friends. It was George Burns who once said, retirement at 65 is ridiculous. When I was 65, I still had pimples. And no matter your actual age, you'll always be in the springtime of life to us at Redeemer. You always have oil burning in your lamp, to borrow from the gospel appointed for today. Most people gathered physically here today, and for many more who are watching online, rightly think of music when they hear the words, Ann Stevenson Moe. That's fair. After all, did you see Ann Mo by the numbers in your bulletin? 10,000 choir rehearsals. 4,968 Sunday morning masses. 2,208 Saturday late night organ practice sessions. 1,600 funerals, 
500 even songs, hundreds of recitals and weddings, years of Messiah sing along, weeks of vacation Bible school. She spent almost a year of her life in VBS. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're so youthful. I remember one wedding in particular. Anne was playing and I was officiating. The bride was Venezuelan, but she'd been living in Colombia for many years after her parents were both murdered by the oppressive regime in Venezuela. The bride met and was engaged to the son of Redeemer parishioners Nancy and Eric Unsworth, who I see in the balcony. And Anne and I were asked to do the wedding at Redeemer, and we were happy to do it. Amazing Grace was a hymn chosen while the altar was prepared. Anne played the first verse, Anne played the second verse, Anne played the third verse, and Anne even played the fourth verse. But the Holy Spirit played the final verse of that hymn that day. I thought the entire organ was going to jump off, jump out of the casework on the walls. There wasn't a dry eye in the room. As C.S. Lewis says in Mere Christianity, the real test of being in the presence of God is to forget about yourself altogether. And in that moment, we were caught up in the throne room and we'd totally forgotten about ourselves. And it was the most beautiful moment in all the world. And that's the Anne that I know and love. The person who pulls the curtain back week in and week out so you and I can sneak in and look behind so we can peek into that throne room above and sense that, yes, everything's going to be all right and that Jesus really is alive and that hope lives on. And the world will never understand a hope, a love that is stronger than death. Honestly, I wonder where my faith, where our faith would be without Ann Stevenson Moe. To paraphrase the Beach Boys, God only knows where we would be without you. But for many here today and for many online, music isn't actually the first thing they consider when they hear the words Ann Mo. That's because Ann is the kind of person who figures out a choir member has been missing practice because things are hard at home, so she just shows up with dinner and best wishes, no questions, no judgment. Just love and grace in high heels. <laughs> Only four people, three of whom are alive, three of whom who will be here today. Father Jack Iker is here with us this morning. Father Fred will be with us at 11. I am here. Father Tom is here with us too in the company of the saints in light. Those four living individuals are the only ones who know many details surrounding things like the donations that she's made to the rector's discretionary account that were directed to specific persons facing specific challenges that tugged at her heart. She's probably upset that I'm telling this, but she channeled, and I've got the mic, but she channeled her hard-earned money through the discretionary fund because she didn't want any credit and she didn't want any glory. And it doesn't stop there, really. It just begins. I have literally walked into hospital rooms more than a few times to hear a sick parishioner sit up and say, oh, you just missed Ann. She spent about an hour with me. And these are the sort of things I know about you, Anne, that I want the whole parish to know as well. Friends, what has happened here for 46 years is called God's grace and favor. And no matter what Anne says, 
we are the fortunate ones. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And one little P.S. As you and I give thanks to God this day for Ann, as we say a little silent prayer during the anthem, it's perfectly acceptable to cry tears of thanksgiving. The anthem is I Was Glad by the great English composer Sir Hubert Parry, and it's based on Psalm 122. But with no disrespect to the psalmist, we are the ones who are most glad. Glad that you, Anne Stevenson Moe, came unto this house of the Lord. May God grant you a most happy retirement.